Hi folks, today I'm going to sow some sweet corn. Um, it's towards the end of April now, April the 24th in fact. You can sow them a lot earlier, um, you can sow them in March. Uh, I haven't got a heated greenhouse. The greenhouse here has got, we've got a heated mat, it's got some bedding plants on at the moment as you can see. Um, and we've got propagators uh, full of tomatoes at the moment. Um, but I uh, haven't got any other heat, so I tend to to keep them, um, sow them about now, so that they're ready for planting out in the East Midlands where I am, that's about um, end of May, beginning of June. So I don't want to do them too early. But anyway, so it's time to sow them now. Um, I've chosen a variety uh, called Bodacious, and I'm gonna be honest, I bought it for the name. <laughs> no other reason, really. Um, tried various varieties in the past. Swift is, is one which I've, I usually grow. Um, but I thought I'd just try something just a little different, so bodacious it is this year. It's a super sweet variety, there are, are various types. This is a super sweet, so it should be really lovely, good for freezing. Um, gonna really enjoy growing this one. If you're not sure what varieties to, uh, to grow, pick up the copy of the latest issue, um, the clue on the front. We've got a great um, a great feature in there by Rob Smith this month, um, and he has a look at various varieties, old and new, and recommends, <coughs> excuse me, some of his some of his favourites. Um, so do pick that up, and some good growing tips in there on sweet corn too. Trays I'm gonna use, um, these are deep cell trays, they're like a book. Um, these are new ones I've, I'm trying from Westland. Um, they're from a range called Groshaw. They do various ones. These are just ordinary cell trays. You can get them in various sizes. But they also do these books. Made from recycled plastic bottles, they say. Um, other things you can use are perhaps the more familiar root trainers. You can see I've cheated. I've stuffed some old ones, broken ones down the sides here. These have been with me for some years. Um, these have had a lot of service and, and they're, they're finally giving up the ghost, but um, very good, very good indeed. And, and like these new ones, these uh, green ones I've got here, they open up, um, they've got a channel which channels the roots down to, from the top of the cell to the bottom. Very good for things like peas and sweet corn and things which quite quite deep roots or which benefit from a nice deep root system. So very good for sweet corn. But if you haven't got any of these things, um, no reason at all why you can't just use um, plastic pots. Um, got sort of nine centimetre, three and a half inch pots here. Um, you could put two seeds in each one, but most of the um, most of the sweet corn you buy now is F1 hybrids. So in other words, you're pretty sure they should come up and uh, they're quite expensive. So I wouldn't um, be ex as extravagant as perhaps putting two in a pot and thin in. Um, I'll tend to just put one in each and there's going to be one in each of these cells. The compost I've used, um, peat free of course, but uh, I had problems with finding a good peat free for sowing. Um, I'm trying silver grow this time. It's not the cheapest. But it's very, very good, I'm finding, um, particularly for seed sowing. It's it's quite a fine compost. So whereas some um, have got a lot of wood waste in them, uh, a lot of quite coarse wood waste, um, which I'm finding tends to set pretty hard on the top. Um, not, not, it's fine for, for, for things which um, you're moving on, you're putting on from the initial stages, but if you're sowing, you want something fairly fine. Um, and this silver grows doing the job. This particular mix has got some John Innes in it as well, but um, I'm finding just multi-purpose or the one with added John Innes has been very good. So I've already filled these. Gonna get the seeds. And I do like sowing sweet corn because they're nice big seeds, nice and easy to handle, and they look nice too, as we'll see. We've never sown them before. Um, you get 25 seeds in a packet and I've got 24 cells here so we'll see how we get on. But um, as you can see, I hope you can see, um, you might have seen sweet corn in things like bird, bird mixes as well <laughs> um, occasionally but um, lovely seeds so I always enjoy handling them and sowing them. And all I'm going to do, you can use a dibber if you want to. Just dib a hole here. 
Um, you need to have these, they're quite, say, quite a big seed, so probably about three quarters of an inch or so in the top. You can dip a hole or you can just push them in if you want to, and we'll cover them up afterwards. But we'll dip a hole and we'll make sure we've got a seed in each one. Simple as that. So say half to three quarters of an inch probably. You can go a little deeper if you want. Now you can sow these direct outside from May if you want to. If you don't want the bother of buying compost or the expense of buying compost and trays and everything else, you can just sow these direct outside, as I say, May onwards. Um, cover them over, the birds tend to like them. Um, so do cover them. It's not worth sowing outside before the end of May because the soil just won't be warm enough and they'll just sit there and rot in all likelihood. There we are, nearly there. And once I've done this, these will go into the propagator, um, which is, is generally set for about uh, 60 or above, a little above. So I've got my tomatoes in it at the moment. I've got some uh, another propagator I need to set up and bring down. There we are. Oh, I've actually got, got more seeds in there. Good old Johnson's, I've got more seeds than I'm bargaining for. So I'll get another tray set up and sow those as well. So just covering them over lightly with the compost. That's all you need to do. The joy of doing big seeds, you no know, sieving or anything like that. There we are. Cover them over. I'll give that a good water. Label it, of course. One I prepared earlier. It's got the name and the date on there because I try and remember to put them in my diary when I sowed them, so I've got something to refer to next year. As I say, they'll go into the propagator at least 60, um, maybe 60 to 65. So this has got tomatoes in it at the moment. Um, we've got it set to 18, which is what it's kind of staying at at the moment. And uh, they should take about 7 to 10 days to germinate. And uh, then we can grow them on in here. By which time the weather's getting warmer and warmer, we hope pretty cold at the moment but it starts to get warmer and these will be planted out um, as I say uh, end of May beginning of June in the raised beds that we've got outside. <laughs> 